morning. Either I'm late or he's early because he's sitting here waiting on me. Headed north. Today's a sad day. Had to lay off one of our valued employees this morning. Plenty of oil. Battery on. That employee was my mustache. Check the oil on the 780. Perfect. People just expect things out of you when you have a mustache. That's a lot of weight to carry every day. Oil check for the 670. 20. I think it's about time to let go of these boots. It's not much holding together anymore. Oil's good in all three machines. Green cart's warming up right now so we can load a semi with what we have on. I'd say there's about 25 to 30 acres left in this field. There's the 110 acres we harvested yesterday. Assuming we get this finished and don't get hit by an asteroid or struck by lightning, we're gonna move about five miles to the west right into the heart of the city of Mattoon. We got a field there. Pick that out. Hopefully it yields just as well as this corn. I've yet to share the yield monitor information yet for the spec 6374 higher management stuff on this farm because you wouldn't believe me if I showed you. None of these ears are really that impressive, but it was planted at 36,000 plants per acre. So you gotta have smaller ears. From what we harvested this field yesterday evening, this corn's all running 16 to 17%. And like I said, pretty good yields. The elevator call and told us that Chris's tin wheeler had a little bit of a coolant leak this morning. So we wanted to keep an eye on it. There's really nothing surprising about that. Trucks always seem to have coolant issues, especially when the nighttime temperatures start to get really cold. Make sure we have plenty of oil in the hubs on the stabilizer tracks. I'd say both sides are ready to roll. Is in fact here this morning. Hopefully, we don't get any cap corn today. bushels on the cart from last night let's go load a truck I'm a nice boss I let my tractor warm up a little bit before I go this might be the start of a big day then again every day that's possibly the start of the big day could also equally have the chance of being a terribly disappointing day. Libra cart making my life easy and the grain cart automating all the record keeping. That's 634 bushels on the tin wheeler. Already sending our second load of the day. That's a good start. This Bex corn is going to overwhelm our logistical system in a heartbeat. I turn my head for 30 seconds and another combine's full. Keep in mind that in the previous field, that 780 was about 5% high. It showed the dry average for the field is 250. It penciled out to 240 over the scales. The point I'm getting at is the yield isn't quite as good as the monitor saying, but there's no doubt that it's not up there. this morning. Okay. Yeah, sounds like I might be going your way then. Uh, hopefully I have some peace and quiet. If we don't start hustling, these combines are going to be stopped again. For those 
those of you who are involved in the different farming channels on social media, Vex traditionally gets a lot of hate for being low yielding. I would compare it kind of to how Pioneer always gets a lot of hate for blowing over in the wind, which seems to not be the case at all. Possibly once upon a blue moon, there was some merit to that argument. At this point though, it's baseless. Oh boy, I'm not keeping up at all. The 6374 hybrid has definitely got some test weight to it. I'm sending some pretty heavy trucks right now. Like that load right there, 990 bushels on a 34 foot trailer. With corn yields like this, I need a 2,500 bushel grain cart, not a 1,300 bushel. <laughs> that was a mistake. I was not expecting that much corn dust. It's in my mouth, it's in my throat, it's in my hair, it's in my jacket, it's everywhere. Combines are headed to the next field. What was your average moisture on that field? 16.5 on my monitor. Field of Beck 6372 just made 12,935 bushels total wet off this field. It's a 42 acre field. That is quite literally the best corn that we've ever raised. Hello everyone, it's me, but from the future. I wanted to give you guys a quick point of clarification. At the time I filmed this video, I was under the impression that that field was 42 acres. As a matter of fact, it turns out the field was 46 acres. Four acres is negligible when you're farming it. However, four acres does end up being about 10%, meaning that this field that ultimately ended up yielding 285-ish dry, according to my initial calculations, actually fell at 263 dry. With a final yield of 263 bushels per acre dry, I can definitively say that that farm was one of our best of this season, and in all reality, one of the best corn crops we've ever grown on a single farm. That being said, I just want you to know that I do not just make these numbers up out of thin air. They're actually real, genuine, accurate numbers that are subject to human error. So I give you the most accurate information possible. At the time, I thought it was 42 acres. It's actually 46. If it had been 220 acres and it was actually 216 acres, would have been less of a sway. But because the field was smaller, it had a large impact on the final yield. Again, my apologies for the inaccurate information, though it was still extremely good corn. Let's get back to the action. And they say Bex can't yield. Basically that Bex corn just beat the Pioneer corn by about 40 bushels per acre. I'm all about being completely fair though, that Bex field was managed to a lot higher standard, more nitrogen, timed a little bit better for the season. That's coupled with a higher planting population. I think the entire package, including the good Bex genetics we had out there, are the reason it yielded so much better. I do believe that the Pioneer corn would have done 20 plus bushels an acre better had it been managed the same way. Headed into the heart of Matt to pick another 35 acres of Bex corn. I found my perch where I will wait for the combines to open the field up. Are you going to be able to move if I'm blocking you? Opening up this field. Shouldn't take too long. Opening her up. Oh, that's relieving to see. I was afraid that we weren't going to be able to get the trucks out of this field because it sits a lot lower than the road and it's a little bit soft.
another field of that Beck 6374 yielder that we had at the other farm. Hopefully this one's just as good, fingers crossed. Corn like this really keeps the cart guy busy. It looks like I need to get busy cleaning my windows again though, because they're already a mess. This corn is still good, not quite as impressive as the last farm. This corn's yielding good enough that we've caught the trucks. It doesn't actually mean a whole lot because we moved three miles further away from the elevator. And we weren't even keeping up with the trucks and 240 bushel of corn yesterday. Our yield expectations for this farm aren't quite as high just because it's more of a fixer upper versus the one we came from, which was a lot more turnkey. There's my truck. Lunch is here in the southeast corner of the field. If you guys want to stop, come get it. If you say lunch is here on the radio, the combines hit road gear and head to the car. The lunch crew's here. Thanks for bringing lunch, Lenny and Allie. Lenny, at least we have food to keep us busy while we wait on trucks. See the combine? Where's the combine? Right too, Andy. Lenny, what is what is Mort doing right now on the combine? Look, look, what is Mort doing on the combine? What is he doing? Uh oh. Uh oh. Can you say uh oh? Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Cab corn. Four point five. Finally found enough seclusion between the corn rows tucked here in the middle of town to use the bathroom. If I would have held that in any longer, I possibly could have exploded. That's how you pee outside. Did you take notes? Gotta love trees. That's all that remains of this field. I can say without a doubt the average yield here is not even going to be close to the previous field. All of these big tree lines that surround this field just absolutely kill the yield potential. Typically your best yields are going to be in square fields with long throughs and no obstructions surrounding the outside. That pretty much sums up the field we just came from. That's it for this farm. There's a chicken hawk to the southwest of me trying to take off and fly with a big bunny. The spec 6374 is a really fuzzy corn. Good problem to have, I guess. Didn't fit on the truck. This is the last of this field, then we're moving back south. Holy cow, look how windy it is outside right now. Andy, are you bringing the pickup down and I can bring you back to the auger wagon or close? Yeah, that sounds good. According to Liebercart, field made 248 bushels per acre wet. It averaged about 16.5% moisture, just like the previous field, so we'll shrink that 2%. That makes it 243 bushels per acre dry. That's actually really good, considering this farm needs some fertility, drainage, and tree line work. We're getting a quick moment to breathe and move around. Marty's got to take the S780 home to the fuel barrel. Go figure. Katie's moving to a farm about halfway towards home, and I need to move the pickup truck around. So, because I'm in town, I am going to lock the door on the tractor. Not that I don't trust people, but I also don't trust people. Just a quick little equipment shuffle. I couldn't have timed this better if I tried. Marty's topping off his fuel, Katie's opening up this field, and Chris and I are gonna go back and get the green cart. Chris took us back to the cart. Time to hit the road. today has been absolutely impeccable. Starting another field. Every now and again I like 
like to make the combines dump straight onto the trucks just to see if they remember how challenging it is when they're loading onto a small window versus a large grain cart. This is going to be another one of those farms where the surrounding tree lines are really going to eat away at the yield average. Opening her up. Normally this is one of the last fields we harvest in corn, but it's coming off at the top of our list. That's not really for any other reason, just for the simple fact that it was convenient and on our way home from the last farm. Oh my gosh, look, look at my hair. It looks like I stuck a fork in an outlet. Jeez. trees like our corn. First dump of the field. Maybe this wind will blow the dust off my windows. The farm we're on right now doesn't classify as really high productivity. Lower expectations out here. We planted Pioneer 1077. That's 110 day Pioneer double stack corn and the ears look pretty good for this old dirt. Combine monitor showing it right at 16% moisture on average, yielding about 250-ish through the middle, although the field average right now is much lower because of what we lost due to the trees stealing our moisture, sunlight, and nutrients. Like I said, we're not expecting nearly the yields out here that maybe we would want to see on our other farms. If this makes 240 bushels an acre dry, we would be ecstatic. As is tradition, I'm waiting on a truck to dump onto. Jeff showed up with a semi just in time. Combines aren't gonna stop. Never mind, disregard what I just said about the combines not stopping. And no, it wasn't just one combine full, they were both stopped. Oh boy, I guess this is why my hair looks like this. I'm trying to pull it out. Not a bad problem to have. There's nothing to see in that bottom right camera. No corn rolling off the side of the truck, nothing like that. Oh, boring afternoon turns into a boring evening. The common theme of this harvest right now seems to be waiting on the trucks. There's what we were looking for. soon enough. There goes Marty. And there goes Katie. That just leaves poor old me all by my lonesome waiting on a truck to dump on. It's starting to get a little chilly outside already. Feels damp. It's gonna rain. You guys want to talk about a fun field to harvest. This one's on that list. Only well, took 30 minutes, but there's a truck I needed. Holy moly, that screen's bright. There's a light switch. There we go. Oh man, wait, 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 wait. That's been my life today. At least it's gonna fit on this truck. I don't have to wait on another one. That's all she wrote for this one. Let's hit the road. How do we want to go down the road this evening? Blinding people or only partially blinding people? Yeah, blinding people. That's the right way to go. That is my respectable lights off approach when I meet a car. This is my you made me angry approach. Everything's on. Oh. That's why the combine was bouncing earlier. 
We've been harvesting so many days in a row that I have to think extremely hard to realize what day of the week it even is. I have no idea right now. I think it's Thursday or Friday or Saturday. Normally, we don't get a harvest this many days consecutively without a good rain break. Are those raindrops on the window? Ironically, right after I just talked about it not raining. Corn here, there, and everywhere, it seems like. So the combine's already fueled up. Put this old girl right by the fuel barrel. I'd say after three or four good days of running corn, it's gonna need a top off in the tank. The perpetual repetition that is harvest is starting to take its toll. I'm drained right now. I'm not making this up, folks. There's actually sprinkles on the window here. Pretty neat feature. These tractors have an exit lighting button built in under the step. That way you don't have any excuse for dropping all of your belongings when you get out of the tractor at the end of the day. Oh, I should probably tarp the cart since there is some moisture in the air. The camera's on cat vision sensitivity level to light. I'm on human sensitivity to light, meaning that I cannot see anything right now. Oh, well, wasn't an issue. You'd think that the exit lighting would be on like a timer or something, not just on forever. Why are you telling me you need shut off? Shouldn't you shut yourself off? Anyways, folks, if you could not guess it, this is going to be the end of the line for me tonight. I would speculate that we will continuously run into logistical bottlenecks if yields remain strong like they are. I don't personally see them falling off much across the board, so this is something we're going to have to deal with moving forward. We do still have some more bin space to fill, which will make a massive difference for our overall harvesting efficiency. That being said, I greatly appreciate all of you tuning in, and I sure hope to see you in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!